Hey, everyone. Welcome back to episode 70 of the Guardian Project podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and I'm here to tell you that Skyclave Shade is really just when you yell insults from atop floating rocks. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gonna throw that shade. Uh, and I'm your host, Mike Coyle. And I was trying to come up with a topical intro that would make people have a good chuckle. So I ran it by my friend, Phi. Phi laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Please listen carefully. And this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. Um, and we're now recording on Mondays. It is Monday. So we shifted our times for recording. We used to record on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Now it's a Monday. So if there's there's the hot scoop on a Tuesday, we will not discuss it until the next week but we'll tweet about it well we'll discuss it i mean we're gonna talk about it yeah if you're in discord we'll talk about it in our discord we'll talk about it in discord um but it's not gonna be on the show until the next week but we had some hot gossip today that we'll get to in a little bit it's very true yeah i'm pretty excited uh also um this past weekend i got to get in a bunch of games of commanders that was really exciting Mm -hmm. um in my year of edh now i am at 277 games so I'm, i'm getting I'm getting really close. Yeah, 90 more to go ish. Yeah. And there's, we're about almost halfway through October now. So I'm going to have to kick it into high gear soon. You had Turbo Day. I was so far ahead. Yeah. So far ahead before COVID hit. And, um, you know, what's funny is uh, the number of comments that I've seen people say online, oh, I've never played more in my life. And I was like, I've never played less. Mm, Because it's, you, I personally, the one, the only downside to playing online is that it's so much slower. Right. So much slower than playing in person. Um, but that's okay. You know, sure. if if we get together with people on like a Friday night or something, because I've done that, I think twice now since this has happened, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I usually can get in like seven or eight games on a Friday night right. just because you'll play a game that just goes really quick because someone comboed or you play a game and, you know, mm-hmm. so I need to get like maybe two of those in a month. Mm. for the night and and i'll be able to really right make sure that i hit 365 no we we used to have two different nights of league play that was mondays and sundays afternoons monday nights was it and well we had fridays we also had friday so i had three leagues yeah or two leagues and a and a sunday Sunday. and then we play on fridays yeah friday nights and then sometimes it's like hey you do anything saturday no and then if you run out to pick up there. cards and there's people just at the shop, you're like, oh, you need a fourth? Okay, I'll slow down. Oh. I'll just, let me just pull out this my consultation. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. But um, I've got time off next week. So all of my vacations this like entire year basically got canceled. I was supposed to go mm-hmm. to Gen Con. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, obviously, that was canceled. Right. Uh, my cousin was supposed to get married and I had a week off for that. Um and, and that got canceled. Mm-hmm. It got moved to next year. Mm-hmm. She she still got married. <laughs> she didn't cancel the whole wedding. Right, right, right. But now we're just going to do the formal ceremony later. And she had a really uh, small, like, intimate, um, close family only mm-hmm. ceremony. So um, you, I have all this vacation time I need to use. And I do have, I, I, it rolls over for the year, but I have um, a cap at where I can't accumulate hours anymore. Gotcha. And I am six hours off mm. of, of getting capped and I get four and a half hours a week. Gotcha. Or, yeah. No, a month, I think is what hits, or no, paycheck, paycheck. So um, I don't know. However, it comes out to be, I have three weeks. Yeah, okay. That's we, what they gave me. <laughs> we, were, we were also going to go to KubeCon this year, too. We were going to go to KubeCon. I forgot about that. We were going to go to, um, Magic Fest, Las Vegas, we were going to try. There was a lot of stuff. So all of our vacations got canceled. So I'm at that point where I have to take time off. So I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off next week. So I'm going to try and line up just a bunch of games. And I also was thinking of doing like a Saturday stream. If if you can make it great, if not, I'm just going to play with people and try and do like a, we're playing for eight hours and we'll schedule people. You come in at one, you come in at three, you come in at, you know, five and just and play all day because I need to hit these games. Nice. So that should be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, we also had some new people join our patron family. Um, welcome to Parker Stockwell. Thank you so much for supporting our show. Um, we can't thank you enough for your support. If you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash guardian project pod. Um, at the end of this month, we're going to be doing another patron giveaway. If you're a patron, we'll be giving away packs that we've opened or that were donated to the show. Um, we're looking to do some non patron givens, giveaways, givens away, givens away, givens away. Um, we're going to look to do those. Uh, we'll be announcing an entry process and, and all of that later this month. 
Yeah. And if you're looking for another way to support the podcast, whatever you are listening or watching the podcast on, if you could subscribe, follow, like, if you're on YouTube, hit that bell. Looking for 24 I think 24 we're, I think YouTube we need subscribers? 24 it might be 23 now so I have a tweet scheduled for tomorrow um we're, we are we're so close to hitting 100 now yeah so we can have a custom URL instead of youtube.com slash <laughs> with like question marks and some slashes in there and mm-hmm. just like a series of numbers and it'll be nice and easy to say head to Utah you, you youtube.com slash guardian project yes you know how nice that would be it would be super nice and you can make that happen you can prevent forest fires <laughs> and uh, but also get us a custom <laughs> url so why don't you head on through that hyperlink over to tcg player hyperlink hyperlink <laughs> <laughs> on tcg player and uh pick up singles and seals product it, it helps the podcast and it'll help us uh do some of the giveaways and stuff that we do yeah and we're also going to talk about some uh banned and restricted cards that you might not want to pick up through that link or, so, may, or maybe you do for Commander because they're going to be maybe, cheaper Maybe now. the price will go down. Yeah. So use the same link for that. Or or Lank. For or that. use the same Lank. Same Lank. Use the same Lank. <laughs> you want to jump into it? Let's do it. All right. Well, we had another Band and Restricted announcement this week. And uh, we weren't all sure that we were going to get one. It was kind of still up in the air. And there's um, there's quite quite a bit that happened. It's pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty huge. Fu- funny enough, it happened right after the grand finals where we saw lots of some of the cards that were banned. Looks like the top four decks were the same decks. Yeah, kind of. Mm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so uh, we, we had updates to three formats yes. in standard. We saw the banning of Omnath, Locus of Creation. Lucky Clover mm-hmm. and Escape to the Wilds. Mm-hmm. Historic Omnath Locus of Creation is suspended. Teferi Time Raveler is banned. Wilderness Reclamation is banned. But my sweet, sweet Burning Tree Emissary is unsuspended. Yeah, that I don't know if that should have been suspended in the first place, anyways. But yeah, yeah. And then in Brawl, Omnath Locus of Creation is banned. Yeah, looks like they just pumped one card with a lot of keywords and a lot of effects and it made it really really strong crazy yeah i mean the summary here i mean th- there's a there's a lot but you know the 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 dominance uh manifested itself in the players deck choices for the grand finals while <clears throat> while it's common in a small field invitational tournament for players to test together and converge on a few decks in this case the field uh, was a striking 23 omnath decks of 32 yeah um so they said to address this uh omnath is banned um, further, you know, continuing, it says without Omnath in the environment, uh, ladder play data makes it clear that adventure decks would remain the strongest strategy. So they're going to ban Lucky Clover as, um, a powerful and difficult to interact with part of that deck's engine. Um, so Lucky Clover says that whenever you cast an adventure instant or sorcery, you, you get to copy and choose new targets. So, mm-hmm. Um, the number of times I've been savage stomped, I believe is the name off of the, the bone crusher giant, yep. or I've had my, that brazen bower bounce my stuff two times, or I've seen the fay of wishes, double grab, grab things. things. It's yep. just, it's crazy. Um, but they said that they expect individual creatures from the adventure decks, uh, things like, you know, Edwell innkeeper will continue to show up, but it just won't be ridiculous. It'll, it'll be successful. Um, the one that was surprising is Escape to the Wilds. Yeah. Yeah. So they said as a further step to ensure that ramp decks don't continue to dominate standard, they're also choosing to ban Escape the Wilds. Um, this card plays a unique and powerful role as a bridge between the strong ramp enablers like Lotus Cobra and payoffs like Genesis Ultimatum and Ugin. So uh, I guess it was the second most uh, played non-creature spell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean... Or- I am, I imagine standard is going to look a lot like Demir Rogues. Or non-land spell, yeah. I, I imagine it's going to look a lot like Demir Rogues and, honestly, Ugin Ramp. It's going to be Ugin Ramp again. I, I love the Demir Rogue deck. It's pretty cool. It's very fun and it's very consistent. Mm-hmm. In Historic, though, um, Omnath is proving to be a powerful contender still. Um, Historic also provides a wider range of tools like Explore and, and Growth Spiral. So to ensure a good diversity here, it is suspended, not banned. Um, Wilderness Reclamation and Teferi just were not uh, not great, they said. So as a result, we're uh, to, to keep the health uh, and balance there, these are going away. And then Burning Tree Emissary said since the suspension, 
um, the power level of historic has increased considerably. So they they think it's uh, a good good way to add it back in because the green red aggro deck fell off. Yeah, hard. I mean, even I mean the biggest the best aggro deck in historic right now is probably still goblins. In so, historic, oh yeah, yeah I Muxus, see it all the time. Muxus, yeah. Muxus is really good. I like playing the mono white life gain because the goblin decks have a very difficult time beating you. Right, and that and that was one of the reasons why Omnath did so well is because Omnath does have gain life synergy in it um, to to beat up Muxus. You mean playing just a land each turn? Yeah, yeah, gain life at least one land. Yep, mm -hmm. and if you want like free mana, I guess you can play more lands. And then get free mana for playing lands. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and then finally, in Brawl, Omnath is by far the most played commander in Brawl. Um, they said the win rate was so high that they are banning it. Um, it'll remain legal in Historic Brawl, um, but they're going to continue to use that commander wait waiting system. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much get paired against other decks that are just as powerful. So likely you'll get paired up with card like commanders like Chulainer. or Oh, just unban Oko, and then you can have uh, Omnath decks only play against Oko decks and vice versa. Yeah. It's it's one thing. So so people think having four different colors in uh, Omnath's color identity makes it hard to cast, but it actually just opens up your deck in Brawl to just play the best cards possible. So it's way more of an upside than it is a downside. Four color good stuff. Four color good stuff. But with Omnath. With Omnath free life and mana. I will be honest, though. I did not anticipate Omnath being that broken. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I didn't think. I mean, on the face of the card, it was like, wow, this is really good. And then if you like blink it and stuff, but you don't even have to blink it. Just free value. I thought you said just blink, like just blink your eyes. And oh, there it was. Blink. That's kind of how Omnath decks happen. You're like, oh, shoot. It's turn three and you turn four and you play Genesis Ultimatum. Three times. Crap. Crap. Three times. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so continuing on, if you're looking for any of those cards, um, they might be going down in price mm -hmm. and we may, no, I was gonna say we may or may not have included any of those in our budget deck. Escape to the Wilds is in my budget deck. That's it, really it's good. not an expensive card. No, no, it's not. It's actually one of the cards that seems like one of the lower power banned cards from a format. Yeah. I mean, their, their reasoning was they wanted to keep, uh, you know, ramp decks under Right. Under control. I, so a five CMC sorcery is never going to be an expensive card in standard from standard. Is that true? No, probably not true. I mean, if they break, <laughs> if they just put it like a five CMC, I win the game. Like, okay, yeah, it's going to be a real expensive card. Right. So they'll, they'll print it at uncommon. It'll be mono green. Don't worry about it. So you play escape to the wilds in mm -hmm. one of the budget decks that we're going to talk about today. So yes. why don't we're going to do deck techs and we're going to talk about the decks that we played on stream just a couple weeks ago um, with a $50 budget. So um, coil is going to talk about Philath world sculptor, and then I will talk about Kaza Royal chaser. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so Philath World Sculptor was the deck that I chose to build for our $50 budget deck tech. Uh, Philath World Sculptor is um, a 5 5 elemental for four, a red and a green, legendary creature elemental. It says when Philath World Sculptor enters the battlefield, create a 0 1 green plant creature token for each basic land you control. And additionally, it has the ability landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put four plus one plus one counters on target plant you control. Um, so Phyleth itself being a 5-5 five five isn't a very uh, relevant thing for the deck. It's mostly about creating tokens and then either making those tokens huge or going wide. And it's really nice because you're looking for basic lands. And yes. since we were building on a budget, you were like, well, this is going to work out really well because I don't need expensive lands to make this deck work. Exactly, exactly. No, there are some more expensive lands that will make the deck work even better than it does here, but it definitely helps the budget aspect being able to play basics. Right. Now, I took kind of a unique strategy to this budget build and I actually went really... I, I'm, I'm playing some like two and three dollar cards in here, which makes it so I have to play um, 48 lands half the quote have to play 48 lands it has so many lands. I'm playing 40 basics <laughs> and then uh, the the other eight lands are actually lands that will help me get landfall. So like evolving wilds, terramorphic expanse, uh, warped landscape. Um, but on top of that, I'm also running the um, the panorama lands that I can run. So Naya panorama. Um, and Jund Panorama, which um, if, you, if you're not familiar with those cards, so they can tap for a colorless. They enter the battlefield untapped. It enters untapped. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> um, or you can pay one, tap it, and sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land of um, that particular shard. 
Are they shards? Jund and, three, and Naya? Three, no, those are, uh, yeah, those are shards, yes. Shards, yeah. So um, Jund, you can either search for a swamp, mountain, or forest. Um, and since those are uh, dictated as words, they're not actually counted in as the card's color identity. So you can play it in a gruel deck, even though it says swamp on there. Um, and then Naya Panorama, uh, being able to find a mountain, forest, or plains. Um, so this allows you to do some some instant speed shenanigans. So really when uh, Phylath, uh, the nice part about it is you can have two different strategies. My two different strategies were either go wide or go tall. Um, so when you... I feel like when you played though, it felt like you were able to do both exactly. very easily, which was really nice. The deck is, you can shift gears pretty quickly. Yes. So it's 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 kind of the one uh, benefit I see over, you know, people compare Phylath to Avenger of Zendikar. Avenger of Zendikar being a mono green, seven CMC. You get a plant when it enters the battlefield for each land you control, not just basic. And whenever a land, you get landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each plant you control. Um, so that one is like a, an only go wide. It can go tall with everything. It's like a go wide and tall yeah, at the same time. Yeah, you just scape shift yeah. real quick. <laughs> right, which scape shift doesn't fit in a $50 in your, in your budget. budget but we're going to talk about some changes we would make if we had increased our budget. For well. sure. Um, so one, a really big strength that Phyleth has as well is it recovers well from board wipes because... You, you're not playing a ton of creatures other than Phylath. So, you know, someone board wipes like, oh, darn, I have to cast Phylath again. And this time it's probably been a couple turns since I've played Phylath last. I'm going to have even more tokens now. So you get to recover well. Um, and then the biggest synergy with Phylath is ramp. So not only am I ramping and getting more mana, but I'm also making my plants bigger and setting up my turns later to make even more plants. Mm -hmm. So it's all the things you want to do automatically go into the synergy uh, as well. And you're in green. And you're doing those things already in most commander decks. For sure. So you're just getting benefit from it from Phyla. And when you're when you're talking about cheap ramp, um, and when I say cheap, I mean low converted mana cost, mm -hmm. the artifact ramp tends to be more expensive where the search for lands ramp tends to be very affordable. So... Obviously, we're going to play like ramp your rampant growth and your cultivate and your Kodama's reach. Kodama's reach, you know, it's not the the cheapest card in the world. You know, it's it's about a dollar um, to get a Kodama's reach. But but when you have forty eight lands, you can afford a dollar. Oh yeah, you sure <laughs> can. Um, so those are kind of um, I guess just the real the real basics uh, for the deck. There are some weaknesses that you run into. I see what you did there right the real basics there's the basics <laughs> <laughs> um so there are some weaknesses weaknesses that go in here it is um weak to flying however in our particular pod we didn't have overly flying you know the wizard's deck kaza does fly but kaza's one power so going really get you for one <laughs> going deal. get you for one um so we didn't have to really run into any of the uh the flying issues um but in the event that someone did have flying you know it would not be great um it since it is a token strategy um bouncing the tokens is just as good as destroying the tokens and bounce spells typically are cheaper in cost uh, money wise than destroy spells um for for the the same costed converted mana cost so in a 50 dollars budget you're probably going to see more bounce spells than you are destroy spells which work just as well on your eight nine token that you just made in one turn so without giving away a lot that happened in that game if you weren't able to check it out um i obviously i will get to my deck next mm -hmm. but um cards like aetherize are mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. against phylath but feels really bad when the next turn you just cast phylath and you go okay there's 12 again right there, it's even worse this time but you gotta you gotta make sure that you're swinging with phyleth and a lot of times you're like oh i can keep phyleth back as a blocker i could keep phyleth as a chump blocker i don't care i'll cast phyleth again but if you don't swing it and someone aetherizes and then you just have a phyleth on the battlefield then you just have phyleth yeah, yes and honestly if phyleth said elemental plant phyleth would be like two costed higher CMC because that's how you would make it fair again. But it would actually be a lot, lot better. To make itself the plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it could put the counters on itself. Right. Um, and then uh, another issue just in in budget in general is card draw. Um, there's not a ton, especially in Gruul, when it comes to card draw. Um, 
I, I have note here, Seer's Sundial is a fantastic card specifically for landfall. So Seer's Sundial is a four CMC artifact. It says landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two if you do draw a card. I actually really like this deck, or sorry, this card in mono white, um, just because mono white lacks a lot of card draw. And if you're top decking and you have a Seer's Sundial and you top deck a land, you at least get a redraw for it. Um, so I, I'm also playing like Shamanic Revelation. So five CMC sorcery draw card for each creature you control. Um, it does have the the caveat ferocious. You gain four life for each creature you control, power four or greater in this deck. Probably isn't going to be more than like two or three of your creatures, but you at least get to refill your hand. Uh, or with some way, card way over fill your hand. Even. You could do that. You <laughs> could. So um, when we talk about specific cards for the strategies, I kind of have it split up into go wide strategy, go tall strategy. So when you're when you're doing the go wide strategy, um, obviously you can swing to win with your plants. So your plants are coming in as zero ones, but we're going to play cards like overrun, which is a sorcery um, that gives all of your creatures plus three, plus three and trample until end of turn. And we play the creature end raise forerunners, which uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, other creatures you control get plus two plus two vigilance and trample so if you already have a pretty predominant board state and you, you're at the point in the game where you can cast you know overrun for five mana or end race four runners for eight mana you can run at least one person over that way um, but you can also want to like spread out your plus one plus one counters onto a bunch of different plants. If you if you really want to go the the go wide, you know, swing in with all four fives instead of putting all the four four counter or four plus one plus one counters on on one creature. And then we're also playing um, an enchantment called Impact Tremors. And Impact Tremors says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremor deals one damage to each opponent. This is the the most budget uh, card that does this. Warstorm Surge is um, another card that costs just a, a couple cents more than Impact Tremors, but I didn't want to run both. So Warstorm Surge is a, I'm going to go off the top of my head, six CMC enchantment um, that says uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to target player. But, but they're zeros. They are zeros. So you would have to have um, something like pumping them. So that's another reason why you don't play Warstorm Surge in this deck. Right. And Perforos obviously is out of the budget. Perforos. For a $50 deck. Yeah. Perforos got out of the forge whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your deck, deals two damage to each opponent, would definitely be the best card to get. Uh, I know a lot of people will play. Um, tooth and nail combo, tooth and nail entwined, allowing you to grab two creatures and then put two creatures from your hand onto the battlefield, grabbing Avenger of Zendikar and Perforos. Gross. And I love it. It works. Yeah. <laughs> it works really well. <laughs> so for the for the go tall side of the strategy, um, it's stacking all the plus one plus one counters onto one plant and swinging with it. You can try to make it unblockable or give it trample. Um, maybe you want to fling it. Um, and honestly, all of those strategies are are cards that I didn't have in the original build, but I have as notes in the if I could do it again build um, in, in order to do that. Uh, but also instant speed landfall. So if you swing with four zero one plants at somebody who only has three blockers and they block three of the zero one plants and you can cast a spell like Harrow, um, which is a Three CMC instant says an additional cost to cast a spell, sack a land, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield and shuffle your library. Then you can instantly make that zero, that zero one that didn't get blocked into an eight, nine. You can do the same thing with cards like Roiling Regrowth, which exactly. is new right from Zendikar Rising. It's an instant that does sack a land, search your library for two basics, put them on to the battlefield tapped mm -hmm. for three mana. So it's it's very good combat tricks with Phylon. For sure. And then the same can be said for um, even the really cheap, um, uh, search or uh, uh, fetch lands like evolving wilds terramorphic expanse mm -hmm. um creatures like sakura tribe elder and burnished heart also have uh, some of the same effects fertilid you mm -hmm. know being able to remove the plus one plus one counters and in fact double masters made crop rotation a budget staple so it's only 48 cents from tcg player uh for a uh, non-foil regular art crop rotation <laughs> um so yeah, so that's that's kind of uh, some of the instant speed go tall strategies. So let's talk about the 
the huge cards, the cards, if you get it off, you instantly become a threat. And if someone can't board wipe or fog or just deal with it immediately, you're probably going to take a game. So um, the first one is Boundless Realms. Boundless Realms was not a, a budget card before it was reprinted in Mystery Boosters at Foil. So the Foil version is actually the cheapest version. <laughs> um, and Boundless Realms is a seven mana sorcery. So for six and a green, you can search your library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of lands you control and put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. So if you cast this on curve on turn seven, then you get 28 plus one plus one counters to put on uh, a plant that you control. Seems pretty good. It's great. Or you can split that up onto all your plants and then just have a huge, huge board. I'd probably split them. I don't know. I'd probably split. It depends if someone is like ready to die. Or if someone's in color, so it's just going to wipe the board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or if you have a fling in your hand. If you have a fling, you definitely stack them all on one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so some other cards that can do very similar things still in our budget. Um, new from uh, Zendikar Rising, we have Nahiri's Lithomancing. So, or litho forming, sorry, for X red red. So sorcery says sacrifice X lands. For each land sacrifice this way, draw a card. You may play X additional lands this turn. Lands you control enter the battlefield tapped this turn. Now in a typical commander deck, this might not be the greatest to sack your entire board, but when literally half of your deck is lands, it might be okay to do that. And with this deck strategy, yep, that, that's happening. <laughs> and then also, um, a card that was printed in the most in the uh, Ikoria commander set, but it also has a printing, an older printing. I'm not exact. I don't exactly remember. I'm going to look it up right now, though. Um, no, just Commander 2020 Animus Awakening. I swear there was another printing of that card, though. Um, so for X green, you reveal the top X cards of your library, put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, this is from Magic Origins. OK, in Origins. Um, but it also has spell mastery. So if there are two or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, untap those lands. So you are running a lot of instants and sorceries just to ramp. Uh, so chances are you are going to have spell mastery and then Animus Awakening. You're going to be able to untap the lands kind of becomes a free spell in a way, um, allowing you to pump all your creatures super huge and go about your business there. Going about your business with your big stompy plants. <laughs> so now some of the cards that I haven't gone over yet that are kind of like, I was telling Andy on the way over, a little bit of spice. <laughs> <laughs> um, some, and, and maybe it, or the reason why I'm playing 48 lands. The first card, again, cheaper because of its printing in Double Masters is Court of Calling. So Court of Calling you can get for under $3 right now off of TCG Player. It is an instant for X green, green, green with Convoke, which is pretty darn good when you're creating a bunch of zero one one plants when your commander enters the battlefield. So uh, Court of Calling says search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So in a perfect world, Court of Calling is going to go grab and raise four runners. You do have to pay um, eight plus three, 11 mana into it in order to go grab it. Um, so we're probably going to end up most of the time not being in a, in a board state where, you know, if you have to tap all of your plants to go grab and raise four runners, it's not worth it anymore because now your plants are tapped. Right. Uh, so maybe we're going to go grab like Amina and Den Wildborn so that we can go grab uh, extra or play extra lands per turn um, or we'll we'll get uh, Rada Heart of Keld uh, from M21 who gets bigger depending on how many lands you have Grumgully the Generous is a is a great target Grumgully so, is great in so, that deck yeah so it makes all your plants come in with uh, an extra plus one plus one counter um, even you know if you just need something to, to go real tall Beanstalk Giant from Throne of Eldraine with power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control absolutely fantastic um, but I'll have to say one of my favorite creatures in this is going to be Teamer Sabretooth. So again, one of those cards that uh, you wouldn't really consider budget, <laughs> but uh, for $3.16 from TCG Player, you can get uh, this uncommon from the cons block, uh, Fate Reforged, I believe. Um, it is a Teamer Sabretooth, so for two green green, you get a 4-3 cat that you can pay one in a green and return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, Team or Sabretooth gains indestructible until end of turn. This allows you, if you have a lot of extra mana, to bounce Phylath back to your hand, cast it again, get a bunch of plants, bounce it back to your hand, cast it again, get a bunch of plants. 
Um, some interesting synergies you could think about doing with Team or Sabretooth is with Beanstalk Giant. It does cost seven mana to get Beanstalk Giant out, but you could return it to your hand and then use the three mana sorcery part of Beanstalk Giant to go search for a land and then cast Beanstalk Giant again. You'd have to have a lot of mana to do that, but it's an option. It's an option. I mean, you can re- return your commander to your hand step. I mean, it this does a lot in this deck. It's really, it's a really good addition. And, you know, it. The Fate Reforged version is the cheaper version, actually. Commander 17, it's four bucks. Yes. So. Yes. The uncommon version is cheaper. Of course. They're both, I guess they're both technically listed as uncommons, but in a commander deck, is it uncommon? Because there's only one copy of it. It's just as rare as everything but the basics. True. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So uh, two two other cards in here um, are some enchantments that I really really love. Uh, Perilous Forays. For a dollar and forty cents from TCG Player, it's a five CMC enchantment for three green green. Um, you can pay one generic to sacrifice a creature and search your library for a land card with basic land type and put it into play tapped, then shuffle your library. So again, you're swinging with five plants. Four of them get blocked. Sacrifice the four of them that get blocked to make that last one that's unblocked sixteen power greater. Um, and then. Ayula's Influence is the other uh, enchantment that I really like in this deck. Ayula's Influence from Modern Horizons. You can get for under a quarter right now off a TCG player. Um, And this is for, again, because the deck has so many lands, uh, if you get to the point, maybe your hand is land flooded. Um, This is an enchantment for green, green, green that says discard a land card, create a 2-2 green bear creature token. So it's a way to use your your lands. Um, I don't believe Borborygmos fits in a budget, which is another way you could use your lands to discard lands to bolt things. Um, but Ayula's influence, at least you get to make some 2 2 tokens. Right. My last favorite card here is um, a $2.03 card from TCG Player. It is a Planeswalker, Nissa Voice of Zendikar. Uh, and the reason I like this so much is uh, it's for one green green. You get a three loyalty Planeswalker that has a plus one. That says put a zero one green plant creature token onto the battlefield. Also a minus two that says put a plus one plus one counter yeah. on each creature you control. That, 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 that part's way better. <laughs> uh, and if you can get to the point of her ultimate, um, it is super, super awesome. Minus seven, you gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of lands you control. Absolutely amazing. Um, this card also printed in mystery boosters or it's in the list. It's one of the two. I see the plane from, from a new recent level. reprint. Yeah. Yeah. So it's originally from Oath of the Gay Watch. It yeah. is printed in Mystery Boosters. Yeah. So those are kind of like the five spicy cards. So how would you how would you change up this deck if you played it again? Right. So so our games are on YouTube without giving everything away. What would you do differently? So um, something that I didn't actually uh, take into consideration is like trying to find plants just creature creature type plants and i did a little bit of research um obviously for this episode to see are there actually relevant plants out there that we could use um in order to put plus one plus one counters on that so we don't have to focus on putting plus one plus one counters on our tokens and the first one i found is phyto titan so phyto titan is a six cmc plant elemental it is a seven two that says when Phyto Titan dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of his or her next upkeep. And it's it's that two toughness that's the real drawback. But after you play one land, now it has six toughness and uh, it's got 11 power. So it doesn't have trample, however, so it's still very easily blockable, which is why um, we're going to play a card called Mostodon, which is like Mastodon yeah. but with moss. <laughs> Sounds like one of my intros, but (laughs) (laughs) so uh, for five CMC, you get a plant elephant that is a five, three that says pay one generic target creature with power five or greater gains trample until end of turn. It's not the greatest synergy in the world, only because of the fact that your plants after one landfall become four power and not five power. But, you know, Mastodon itself can give itself trample and you can make it a nine, seven with just one land trigger. Um, with and only five CMC, and you can pick up the card for ten cents. Mm-hmm. Seems like it would be a really good add. Um, one that people probably actually know because it's been printed in uh, Commander decks is Creeper Hulk. So Creeper Hulk is a plant elemental five five for three green green um, that has trample, and you can pay one and a green until end of turn. Target creature you control has base power and toughness five five and gains trample. So you can turn your zero one plants into five fives. And if they have four plus one plus one counters on them already, now they're nine nines and they have trample. 
or you can just pump Creeper Hulk a bunch if you want. And Creeper Hulk already has Trample, so really good uh, target to put all these. And one last plant is Snapping Creeper. And Snapping Creeper is um, a 2-3 for 3 mana with Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, Snapping Creeper gains Vigilance until end of turn. So stack a bunch of plus one, plus one counters on it and go to town so you just add some other plants instead of just focusing on the tokens yeah that's that's what i would do differently um i i do like the way that it is built with the 48 lands in it just yeah. because which of, is so funny yeah that's so many it's just so it's so like on turn 20 my boundless realms still searches for 20 lands that's true yeah so tell us okay if you could make a few upgrades regardless of budget what would you add so definitely we're going to add avenger of zendikar because if there's one thing better than having just phyleth on the battlefield it's having avenger of zendikar out there too yeah. so you can get five plus one plus one counters on one plant and one plus one plus one counter on all your other plants for every um enter enter the battle or every landfall trigger we're going to put a bunch of stuff that makes us so we get extra lands per turn like azusa courser of crew fix dryad of the elysian grove um, Oracle of Moldiah. Obviously, these are very, very expensive staples. Well, Azusa, I guess, came down a little bit because it of its printing some. in M21. Mm -hmm. um, Dryad of the Elysian Grove, I think, is still a very affordable card. It is, I think, $12 right now, but for what it does, I think it's fantastic. Um, we do want to throw some fetch lands in here to kind of help uh, with the synergy. You, if you have them, yeah. you, you don't have to go for the super, super expensive fetch lands. In fact, Fabled Passes and Prismatic Vista are the best fetch lands you can play in this deck because they do search for basic lands specifically. Not that the other fetches can't search for basic lands, but you don't need to invest in a misty rainforest just to grab a forest. Right. Um, doubling season is obviously just the best. Double your tokens, double your plus one, plus one counters. Double the fun. Which is one of the sections that I have for mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then last, but certainly not least, we're going to put Perforos and Food Chain into the deck just to try to do a combo in. Um, so Food Chain is an enchantment that allows you to exile a creature you control and add uh, a number of mana. A number of mana in any combination equal to that card's converted mana cost plus one and this is uh, typically used in like with squee the immortal or with uh prosh sky raider of kerr um and, and what it allows you to do with perforos on the battlefield is not infinitely but near infinitely loop um casting phylath and getting perforos triggers and taking out all of your opponents interesting mm -hmm. i never thought about that i've never played with food i've never owned one i've never held one on i've also list. never played against one food chain's on the list food now. chain is on the list yeah it didn't go down in price i shocking didn't expect it to <laughs> <laughs> well on the flip side my commander is very different sure from is. what you played so um <clears throat> i went with a blue red deck here with Kaza Royal Chaser. So Kaza Royal Chaser is a human wizard. Uh, it's a one, two with flying in haste for a blue and a red that says tap. The next instant or sorcery you cast this turn costs X generic less, where X is the number of wizards you control as this ability resolves. So I instantly saw this deck or this card uh, when we were doing all the preview uh, preview season um, discussion. I was like, I really want to build this deck. So I decided to go with wizard tribal and then really just big spells. But I specifically focused on spells that aren't played very often. Okay. So um, it wasn't that I was just going to play blue sun zenith. Um, it doesn't even fit the budget because we're working with $50 budget. True. Decks. Um, so I really wanted to show off cards that aren't seen on stream very often. So you might not have seen them or heard of them. Um, and with Kaz's ability to significantly reduce the cost of a spell, you want to build up to sink as much mana as you can into spells to get the most out of their effects. So obviously X spells are very good or spells that cost a lot, but have a generic amount of mana in them mm -hmm. in addition to some colored pips. Um, the problem is um, this deck has some some strengths and some significant weaknesses. Okay, so okay. so this, and I don't know if we've really ever defined this before, and um, it's a pretty common term. It's not even a magic term specifically, but it's, it's a glass cannon deck. So mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with that term, it really just refers to something that's really powerful, but doesn't have much defense or way to back it up. So if it doesn't do the thing it's supposed to do, it's not going to do much. Right. Um, which is unfortunate, but if it does the thing, it really does the thing. Right. Um, so on a $50 budget, it was pretty difficult, I'll be honest, to make a, a deck around this commander that could hold up well against other decks that just had inherent strength built into them. So we played against, obviously we just talked about Phylath, there was Aura, the, the black 
white cleric deck and then a mono red um, Morag extra combat deck. And Phylath just continues to make stuff when it just comes in. It doesn't really need other things necessarily right. and, and lands. And then Aura, the clerics already gain life. And then when they die, they can return other things. And then Morag, which was, I think, the... Um, I don't know the word I'm looking for here. It was like the sleeper of the decks. We had no right. idea what it was going to do, honestly. Like, and it e kind of went crazy sometimes. Yeah, e even in an expensive setting, mono red landfall mm, yeah. doesn't really ring a bell. It wasn't, yeah, something that we weren't anticipating. So um, I would say that I wouldn't say that my deck didn't function properly, but I didn't see the cards I needed to see in the right spots. Right. So it didn't, I don't feel like I did a lot, but. I do feel like when we were playing it on stream, I got a lot of comments on, oh my gosh, I can't believe this card is played or wow, I, that was really cool. So I, I guess I had the wow factor, which was fun, right? Because we're trying to entertain us also on stream. So um, it does the thing well when it does and it and it fizzles when it doesn't and that may have happened on stream. So um, spoiler, spoiler alert, spoiler. <laughs> watch the YouTube videos. <laughs> it does some fun stuff. It so, sure does. The, the, you know, the whole point of the deck is to to play with just a bunch of wizards that have various abilities and then some really big spells since Cass is going to make things cheaper. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go hard on the cost reduction here. So I included 11 cards between spells and creatures that allow me to untap Kaza. So okay. this was not a typical build. If you look at the typical build of Kaza, I, I don't think mine remotely resembles anything that you would find on EDA track. Not that I'm seeing. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, and I, and I, I kind of like that because I feel like I had to go funky with this to see if I could make it work. So I've got cards that say, uh, target creature gains flying until end of turn, untap it. I, I'm, I've got Twiddle, tap or untap target artifact creature or land, Triton tactics, untap creature. So what you do is you, you can cast all the instants, you hold priority, and then you resolve them down just like you would with like a wilderness reclamation. So mm -hmm. you cast them all and then you tap Kaza. When it untaps, you tap in response to the next one resolving so you can get some significant cost reduction. So I have played quite a few games with Kaza now and I have been able to reduce by 37 wow. once. No, no. It was 30, it wasn't, uh, it was. 37 is a prime number, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it wasn't 37. It was, because I had to pay X. The X was 37. Okay. So I guess it was higher than that. Okay. Um, when, I, when I cast a, um, like a Comet Storm or something, and that Ooh. felt really good being able to do something like that. Nice. But I had to have like five untapped spells in my hand, and I had to have wizards out. And so there was, there was like a lot of setup for this okay so okay. i've got a bunch of spells there's there's creatures like puppeteer it says pay a blue tap it to tap or untap target creature fate stitcher has tap it to untap another target permanent tap or untap um a feto alchemist is tap to untap target artifact or creature these are all wizards um, i don't have any non-wizards in the deck um but i played with some wizards like um vidalian illusionist blue blue and tap it to to phase a creature out um, so you can, I guess, get rid of something really big, like maybe one of those crazy tokens that Phylath was going to swing at me with mm -hmm, to, to phase mm -hmm. that away until, um, the next turn. Um, but I also wanted to put in here some options if I wanted to play this with some other commanders. So I have Melek is a Paragon in here, Adelie's the Cinderwind and Nin the Pain Artist, um, as potential, just, I'm going to swap this for a different commander. Obviously the untap spells are really going to work well with Nin and with Kaza, not necessarily with Melek or Adelie's, but it couldn't hurt. And some of them have um, draw a card stapled onto them. Very true. So um, I would say it's not a waste and, and it's nice because you can then utilize this as not just a Kaza deck, but you can play with others. Um, the deck has 23 wizards total. Um, if you did want to go the route of changing up to one of the other commanders, um, there's likely a significant amount of cards that you would want to change though. So the problem here is you, you usually only get to cast a spell once. Mm. Um, and so you, you really want to get more, um, out of it. So I have a section, um, where you can, I guess, double the fun, right? So I've got cards like, um, and the enchantment double vision, whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery, each turn, copy that spell, you can choose new targets. So, uh, I can, do a huge spell that some some big X cost spell, and then you get to copy it with that X, which is really great. Okay. Um, I am playing um, increasing vengeance so that you can give 
the cards in your graveyard flashback. Okay. Um, and then I'm playing the card Volcanic Vision, which this was one that I wanted to grab just because it I've never seen this played and I wanted to play it. So it's a seven CMC sorcery, five generic, and then red, red. Return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Volcanic Vision deals damage to that card CMC to each creature your opponents control and then exile Volcanic Vision. Nice. So if you can just play this for red, red, which is extremely easy to do in Kaza, you can just return something big, like maybe the Treasure Cruise that you played a couple of turns ago or the clone legion that that you have in the nice. deck um for for eight mana or i'm sorry nine mana so i i think that on a larger budget mm-hmm. you could add some more cards that allow you to cast things from your graveyard um and i'll and i'll go over those when i go through the upgrades but i think the biggest synergies here or the or the top cards for this deck are are cards that are for the most part x spells so you've got comet storm it's a pretty solid staple in, in a lot of spell slinger decks. It's an instant with multi-kicker uh, for X red red and then multi-kicker for a generic mana. You can choose any target, then choose another target for each time the spell is kicked. It deals X damage to um, each of them. Yeah, I mean, even this and, and Rolling Earthquake are even played in CEDH as ways to end the game. Yeah, so. yeah. And I don't have Rolling Earthquake in here only because I did not want to take out any of my wizards fair in, enough in the uh in the wake of the ginormous spell oh yeah otherwise i 100 percent would have added that to this deck unless i had a way to give all of my cards indestructible or my creatures indestructible i think rolling earthquake only hits uh things on the ground too so even your i think your flyers would survive i don't i uh, do i have two flyers i think i have two flyers well those two flyers those two fly adelies <laughs> and kaza are gonna make it they're gonna make it out and everybody else, you were, oh, thank you. I'm sorry, it's actually creatures without horsemanship. So all your creatures are dying. Okay, so all my creatures are gonna be <laughs> No, okay, so we're not gonna do that. Um, another card that I really like here is Invoke the Fire Mind. The problem is it was a sorcery. I would love if this was an instant, but it was a card that it's not played very often either. X, blue, blue, red. So you can choose one, draw X cards, or it deals X damage to any target. So if you can double it, great, because then you can do one, um, you can do it twice because mm-hmm. it's a modal spell. So you would copy the mode that you chose. Um, but drawing cards uh, is is pretty important yeah. in this deck because you only get to cast a spell once. Right. And well, it seems that way because you were also talking about like having to cast five specific cards. And if you don't have ways of tutoring, doesn't fit in a budget. Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I definitely don't. And funny enough, because there are some that I reference in, in upgrades. Um, but you do need some card draw here. A really, really good card that you can use in a deck that is a tribal deck is uh, Distant Melody. So it's a sorcery. Choose a creature type. Draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. So for four mana, which could just be one blue, um, draw a card for each wizard you control in, in in a lot of the time it's probably going to be like four so i would pay one blue to draw four cards uh, oh yeah a, a, any day That'd be any amazing. day uh clone legion as i mentioned uh i did not get to cast this um on stream but clone legion is uh seven blue blue so if you can cast it for blue blue you you um put a token that's a copy of a creature for each creature target player controls onto the battlefield um to so. double the number of plants that I have, plus you get a file out if yeah. you target me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would really like to do that. <laughs> I would really like to do this. <laughs> and then just for flavor, because um, not even for flavor, for just for, here's my spice. Okay. A- Apex of power. So seven and red, red, red uh, for a sorcery. Exile the top seven cards of your library until end of turn. You can cast non-land cards exiled this way. And then if this was cast from your hand, add, t- add 10 mana of one color your mana pool oh yeah yeah so um this card's really good and i did get to cast this off double vision so i got to exile 14 cards and get 10 mana um because you only get the mana for the one that was cast from your hand now now let me ask you um because i actually had a similar problem than this because I'm, I'm looking at eh rack and i'm not i'm not looking at your specific build but would you say that your build is probably more primarily blue than it was red yes so you would almost always have to add blue to your yes. mana pool to do it yes because mine was the same way but green instead of red yes okay yep so i definitely have way more blue than i have red here um that's that's part of the problem so i have i have 36 basic lands um a split of 1818 island and mountain um 
one of the upgrades when we get to that section is you need to fix this mana base. <laughs> and by you, I mean me. <laughs> and on a $50 budget with uh, red and blue, it is not necessarily easy. Mm-hmm. Um, you can add the ones that come and tap and you gain a life. But this deck right now, based on TCG player pricing, is clocking in at forty-eight fifty, excluding the basics. Nice. Um, and that includes my commander. Um, so... I, I have a dollar fifty to work with uh, already, so nice. I need to. I, I clearly I, I gained some money back here somewhere because this was like cents from fifty dollars <laughs> when we were doing this. Right. And then finally, the top card in my opinion for the entire deck, it's actually just a creature. Um, it is the card Sage of Fables. So it is a Merfolk wizard for two and a blue. It's a two, two that says each other wizard you control enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, you can pay two, remove a plus one, plus one counter from a creature you control and draw a card. Okay. So you can make them a little bigger, um, but it's mostly for the drawing mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you really need to be able to draw cards because you're going to run out of spells really fast <laughs> and then not have a whole lot to do. So if I would make changes here, yeah. you know, within I, budget, with, with, within budget, I don't have specific spells to change here, mm-hmm. but from, from a specific strategy, um, I, I, I don't know if this deck was paired well in that pod, to be okay. honest. Some okay. pods are just not great mm-hmm. for a deck like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have creatures that can withstand battle. <laughs> That's uh, true. They just can't. They are very small and they do unique things, but they all need to be there at the right time. Right. And that just was not happening. So for this game, um, I think I, I really would have probably added a lot more bounce spells and focused on a lot more like Aetherize. I have Supplant Form in here. It returns a creature to someone's hand. You make a copy of it. Um, Stern Proctor, when it enters, you return target artifact or enchantment to its owner's hand. I mean, it, it was hopefully going to disrupt a little. I had a couple of cards. Exclusion made to return target creature to its, its owner's hand actively helped you unless i hit one of your tokens but that wasn't necessarily a good idea right maybe it would have been good against like the morogs of limiting how many extra combats um that, that dan kraus would have gotten in that game but you're right single target i think everyone else at that table was playing go wide yeah we had a goblin deck you had a million plants and then the clerics just you know they're all very low cmc and they only so it was it was not necessarily the best pairing so i don't know if there was a ton that i could have changed Mm -hmm. i think that just having a different build or perhaps this being a different budget would likely look significantly different um on a 50 dollars budget it was pretty difficult um but Upgrade wise creatures, I would probably add cards like Baral Chief of Compliance nice. so that you can make um, your spells cheaper. I would add cards like um, Sigil Tracer. It's a wizard that says one in a blue. You can tap two and tap wizards to copy target instant or sorcery. That's very, very strong here. Azami, Lady of Scrolls. Now, that one is kind of within budget, but it was triple blue pip. You can tap an untap wizard to draw a card. Mm -hmm. That likely just needs to go in here. I'm already running dual caster mage. I didn't really reference that, which lets you um, flash it in and you copy target instant or sorcery. If you needed an alternate win con and you did want to have some sort of a combo, you could do the twin flame. You could do um, heat shimmer, whatever it is that you wanted to play with the dual caster mage there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to hurt to have like pull from tomorrow here. It's a five dollar card. Cyclonic Rift is 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 a solid card. Mm-hmm. Finale of Revelations really good. You can draw cards, and if it was ten, which is pretty easy to do, if you if you have a little time to set it up to draw ten cards, and you have no max hand size, mm-hmm. Spell Seeker to tutor for um, an instant or sorcery CMC oh, yeah. two or less. It is also a wizard. Um, I know a couple, I'm, I'm, and again, I'm staring at EDA track right yeah. now. Uh, you were talking about how, you know, some of the, some of the, your favorite wizards are the ones that allow you to draw cards. And I'm looking at a very affordable Arcanist, the Omnipotent and Niv-Mizzet Perrin. Niv-Mizzet Perrin, yes. But uh, you know, Niv-Mizzet I also, Niv-Mizzet Perrin, triple red, triple blue is going to be real hard to cast in budget. It is very hard to cast on budget. However, Jorian Rune Diver would not have necessarily been that bad of an idea here. You know, I didn't even think about it. And it was like, well, I guess I do cast two spells in a turn so I can at least draw one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, you've, you've got some significant upgrades that this deck can can take. Um, you know, we can add Mystical Tutor to grab, you know, the instant sorcery that you want to the oh, top yeah. of your library. Um, or maybe we could just add, you know, an expropriate as, as a little treat. Just, just a casual expropriate. That costs 
not that much mana right I, when I, I have castle i was going to ask you so so one of the one of the reasons maybe you wouldn't see expropriate played and webcam commanders because you do take control of other people's uh creatures i was going to ask you like a card like mass manipulation if you if you shied away from playing a card like that just because of how difficult it would be to resolve in, in our, webcam magic. In our discord it was suggested when we were talking about our build and they're like why why didn't you know here here's a good card and it, it's very difficult to take cards in webcam now granted we we do use infinite tokens we do have our own tokens so it would have been very easy um for me to do that mm -hmm. um i just kind of strayed away from that and then um, but but expropriate costing blue blue would have been really nice to take four turns. No, you you never get four turns with an expropriate. I know, but <laughs> you can hope. <laughs> you can hope and dream. You can you can always dream. Now, would would something like a, like a, a coat of arms ever be a consideration for you for like like going into the wizard tribal synergy portion of it? I I do think that coat of arms is, is a good card. Um, however, for for the budget deck, obviously it doesn't fit because coat of arms. I think the cheapest version is like eight bucks mm -hmm. from one of the dual decks. But I don't know if I really want to swing. I think I just really want to play spells but seeing the downside of having two twos and one ones and maybe a three three and if i could have them all be six sixes or seven sevens or eight eights i guess it could be could be it could be really it could be really good except blockers to, to be fair in our particular pod wouldn't, wouldn't have, have mattered. Been, wouldn't have been good literally for you. would not have mattered no, wouldn't have been good for you <laughs> no it would not have even mattered so um like a, uh, and then earlier I had mentioned lands. This is where the biggest benefit's going to come from, at least for this deck, upgrade wise. Um, there's so many double and triple pip cards, meaning you've got three red, you've got red, red, red in a spell, or you've got blue, 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 or in the one blue, blue, red um, in a single spell with X. Um, you need the right color lands. At one point, I, I think in one of the games, I was drawing all red and I needed just a second blue mana. And I was like, I just cannot find this blue mana. So I don't play a ton of rocks in here. Um, like you mentioned earlier, some of the rocks are more expensive. So it's not the ideal way to go when you're building a budget deck. I did manage to get a Talisman of Creativity in here. Mm -hmm. I did manage to fit the uh, Is It Signet and Arcane Signet. So I had three solid uh rocks mm -hmm. in here I, I mean and i even fit soul ring in here nice. i'll be honest That's i nice. fit all of those um wizards are really cheap but you can add some some better wizards so i have a lot of notes and a lot of changes i want to make and we do want to circle back to that stream and have those four decks played again yeah but at a just like you no know, budget whatever you you know whatever the budget is that you want to use mm -hmm. go go for it now, now, would something like a like dramatic scepter be something that you would want to put in a deck like this? I mean, uh, that just turns into an infinite combo deck. Then, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it doesn't hurt because you can keep untapping Kaza. Right now, now one card um, you didn't mention it is in budget, and I do see it played in CEDH, but a lot of people don't look at it because it's a partner card from Battle Bond, and you don't ever play the partner with it. Is uh, and and that's in a competitive scenario is Chakram Retriever. So the dog a, yeah. with the with the frisbee. Yes. Yeah, so that yeah, five CMC um, elemental hound two four says whenever you cast a spell during your turn, untap target creature. Yeah, um, I probably should run it. But you were running very very uh, wizard synergistic, so it was all wizard. So I understand why you didn't run an, an elemental, elemental hound. hound. An yeah. elemental hound. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I, I did. I did go. I did go hard on the. Uh, <laughs> you go the, hard on those wizards. On the wizards, I even had a Kazmina in here. Just you know, mm -hmm. who's a wizard? Absolutely. I should go make the wizards and make it harder to to target my wizards. So, um, I I really did have a very good time building these decks. So, um. This was fun. We will probably do this for new sets coming out where we do budget night for the new set. Um, it was a week after the release. So mm -hmm. we had all, I think we all started building the decks about three weeks in advance. So um, this was a lot of fun. And we hope that you enjoyed these deck techs. Um, the list to both of these decks are going to be in the show notes below. Um, and if you have any suggestions of cards that you would add or questions on the cards that we chose, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and don't forget, we stream every Thursday at twitch.tv slash atflory. This week, Daniel from Into the 99 and Max from CMDR Central are going to be playing with us, so make sure you stop in. Um, we want to thank you all for listening. If you want to contact us, you can find us on Twitter at GuardianPod. You can find me on Twitter at atflory. You can find me on Twitter at WormCoilEngine. And you can email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. 
we will see you all next week monday monday for well we record on mondays you're gonna listen to this on thursday probably maybe wednesday night maybe because we're gonna release on wednesday night still maybe you're one of the people stockpiling the episodes up and you're listening to like all of them at the same time and if you are thank you yeah you're great you're really great you're all great and you're great in particular (laughs) you know who i'm talking to talk to you next week bye-bye